Congressman Ted Lieu, Democrat from California, representing part of L.A. County and a member of the Judiciary and Foreign Affairs Committees. Congressman, thank you for being here. And uh, we, you're coming with us here on a very busy news week. I want to start with your reaction to this call by President Trump for an investigation into voter fraud. What's your overall response? Uh, thank you, Hallie, for that question. We know in less than a week that President Trump now lives in an alternate reality. He just makes stuff up. He's lied about his small inauguration crowd size. He's lying about three to five million voters voting illegally. And my response is bring it on. I want a lot of mm. investigations because I will bet a great bottle of California wine that they cannot find a single credible witness who will take the oath in a congressional hearing and say, yes, three to five million people voted illegally because that's just a false fact. So it's funny because I was going to ask you about why not just have an investigation to put it to rest, right? And it sounds like you're saying that is exactly what you want to have happen. Absolutely. And on the Judiciary mm. Committee, I want Shut our the door chairman on to call. It, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yes, I want hearings immediately. I want to see them bring up witnesses that will validate President Trump's claims because they won't be able to find any. A poll from The Economist that we were looking at from last month, we'll pull it up on screen here, finds more than half of Republican and independents and more than a third of Democrats actually do believe millions of votes were cast illegally in November. Uh, again, no evidence to support this. I want to be very clear on it. But when you look at those numbers, Congressman, is that concerning to you? Why does this storyline seem to resonate even with Democrats, people in your own party? It is highly troubling, which is why I support investigations. I want this brought out into the open. I want hearings on this because it's going to show that President Trump is lying. There's really no other way to put it. He's just making stuff up. We live right now with a White House that puts out alternative facts. We have a president that lives in alternate reality. It is highly disturbing for America that this is happening. I want to talk a little about what else about the uh, president is doing today, Congressman. He's heading over to the Department of Homeland Security, where we expect him to sign some executive actions that would, for example, start work on this border wall with Mexico that would uh, direct immigration enforcement to start procedures to prioritize the, the deportation of criminal aliens, as the language says. And then there's also plans in the works, as we have been reporting, for the president making good on his promise of extreme vetting. I, this, I imagine, is personal to you. You're one of just 24 members of Congress who came to this country from another country. You came as a child with your family. So this feels like it, it is personal to you. What do you make of these executive actions that the president is taking, particularly when it comes to the possibility that he may end up temporarily banning uh, refugees? As an immigrant, I understand that one of the things that makes America great is that we are a nation of immigrants. My first reaction to these executive orders is that Lady Liberty is crying. And when you look at President Trump's vision of reality, it is simply not factual. In terms of a wall along our southern border, he is trying to address a problem that does not exist. Net migration from Mexico since 2008 has been negative. So for the last eight years, more Mexicans have left America than entered. And now we're going to go on this big federal boondago, spending billions of dollars for a huge wall uh, that is not going to solve the very difficult immigration issues that we have facing America. There's obviously the question of who would pay for this wall, right? The president right. has consistently said it will be Mexico. Mexico right. has consistently said it will not. I had one senior administration official say to me uh, a little while ago that there may actually be more of an appetite in Congress to get behind some kind of funding for the wall because of uh, the way that their constituents feel about the plan. Do you buy that? Absolutely and not. I'm talking about Democrats in Congress, not just right. Republicans, but specifically the, the argument was that there will be some Democrats who are in vulnerable seats who will end up backing this. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen, but keep in mind, Mexico is a sovereign country. We can't make them do anything. They're not going to pay for this wall. The American taxpayer will. And that's why you see these proposals by the Republicans in Congress to try to cut Social Security cut Medicare because they need to provide funding for stupid ideas like this physical wall. At least under President George Bush, we had compassionate conservatism. What we're seeing now is crazy conservatism. These are extreme ideas that a majority of Americans do not support, and that's why you saw the huge people rallies turning up for the Women's March on January 21st. So then, Congressman, how do you try to stop what you are calling crazy conservatism uh, if the end goal presumably would be to work with Republicans? You need to work with Republicans as a Democrat in Congress. Um, do you think that kind of rhetoric helps? 
I do, because keep in mind, Donald Trump and the Even Republicans, with Republicans are now this. Yes, because what you're going to find out is you're going to see, I think, a significant number of Republicans who do not support Donald Trump because they don't actually agree with many of his policies. Speaker Ryan has to come up every couple of weeks and say something public to contradict what Donald Trump has said. So Speaker Ryan publicly came out and said, no, we're not having a deportation force. Speaker Ryan felt compelled publicly to say, no, we're not going to impose tariffs on American companies. So you're going to see a reaction from not just Democrats, but also Republicans to some of the more extreme ideas of this alternate reality-based president. You have proposed a bill to prevent the president from launching a nuclear strike without a declaration of war from Congress. This was not something that you brought up under President Obama's administration. So are you solely doing this because of Donald Trump in the Oval Office now? No, I introduced this bill with Senator Ed Markey last year. I actually expected Hillary Clinton to be president, so this would have applied to her. And the notion is very simple. The framers of the Constitution put all these checks and balances on the president with the judicial branch, a legislative branch. And then they gave the greatest power they knew at that time to Congress, the power to declare war. There's no way they would have let one person, the president, launch a nuclear first strike that can kill hundreds of millions of people in less than an hour. That is war. And if you don't define it as war, you've read it out of the Constitution. So our legislation is very simple. It says a president cannot launch a nuclear first strike without a declaration of war from Congress. Okay. Congressman Ted Lieu, thank you for joining us from uh, Southern California there to be with us today. Appreciate it. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.